I'm Dave Campbell, CEO of Campbell Management Consulting, here every Monday evening talking about project management, project management related topics from 7 to 8 on Santanet News Talk Radio 1100. Tonight we are very, very pleased to have Ms. Sahar Andrade as a guest. Uh, she's a communications specialist and we have been talking about if you missed the beginning of the show, added value. And one of the things I believe that PMs can bring as part of the added value package as a project manager is an enhanced ability to communicate, which then leads to greater leadership skills, uh, helping bring dysfunctional, dysfunctional teams into functional teams, and so on and so forth. Uh, Sahar, before we took the hard break, uh, we were starting to talk about body language. Yes. And I don't think I don't think a lot of people recognize or realize that sixty percent, approximately sixty percent of communication is body language. Correct. Correct. Uh, you know, but people, yeah, you know, they just think uh, you know somebody can get up there and start rattling words and whatever, as opposed to the body language component. You know, imagine if I'm if you're talking to me and um, I'm listening, you know, and I'm and you're telling me something, but you have your hands crossed and your legs crossed. That transmits the message to me that you're being defensive. Need to go to the bathroom, right? <laughs> or you're being defensive, or or you know you're holding something up. Yeah, right. I've had too much coffee. And I need to go to the can. <laughs> yeah, no, I know what you mean. No, you know, so basically a, a non-verbal or a body language communication, it's a message that we transmit through gestures, through posture, space, facial expression, and our body language communicate all the emotions that we feel. Our body communications is basically more accurate than our verbal. So in our non-verbal communication, we have appearance, the body language, silence, time and space and appearance we mean either personal appearance or what we have around us i mean if we do if you're going to do business if i'm a, a project manager walking into an account in jeans and a t-shirt would they take me seriously or they would take someone else in a suit not necessarily a tie but at least a suit you know a, a nice jacket with a nice shirt uh, with it. Well, you know, it, it, I guess it depends on whether you're, you're the founder of Facebook or something like that. Yeah. But I, I would say, I would say the, the majority of the time. Uh huh. No, you need you need to you need to be uh, properly dressed. Yeah. Appropriately dressed. I mean, it's not like you're going to a luau or something like that. You need to, you know, it's it's not you know uh, Hawaiian shirts and flip flops. It's you know you should be you should be somewhat dressed for the part. And and so remember. You know, Facebook is Gen Y, and it's a totally different communication range, but we're not oh, going to go no, through that tonight, I, okay? No, I don't want to talk about Gen <laughs> Exactly. So I'm, no, talking, no, no. <laughs> I'm talking about the regular corporate uh, yeah, America, no. you know, that, that, we, that we do. And, and, uh, like, but we need also to, to uh, put in consideration that in certain parts of the world, like, for instance, the Persian Gulf area, people don't necessarily wear suits. They wear their national dress with a head cover, but, and the fancier they get, the silkier it gets. So we need to put in consideration that for them, professional also is to be in a national dress, not necessarily in a suit. So here comes the communication through uh, different cultures. Surroundings, of course, has to be your, the neatness of the room or of the office, the furniture used and all that. Facial expression will be uh, any gesture. I, I'm gonna share something with you. Uh, during the Cold War, uh, the Russian president at that time was Gorbachev. The, when he came to uh, visit the United States, the first uh, thing that he did out of the plane is that he clasped his hands together, you know, and right. moved it on his both shoulders. Right. In the United States, this means, this symbol more or less translates to being victorious. Right. So the U.S. media at that time thought that he sa he's communicating that he's going to be victorious over the United States when in Russia the same symbol meant that you are my friend. Right, but, but we all know, Sahar, that the media in this country are a bunch of putzes. So, yeah, but, but, but still. I, but, but I agree with you. But still, you know what? Another example, like the OK sign that we have in the United States... <laughs> yeah. You like that, huh? 
actually they like that <laughs> yeah. you know the okay sign that we have in the united states where you put your index and thumb together like in a little circle with three uh, fingers right. in the air well this yeah. same sign if you invert it a little bit is uh, uh, an, an of, a very offensive sign in brazil and it really? means yes and it means zero in russia and it means money in japan I'll be damned. You know when I do like little hand puppets in front of a, a light or something, it means a little doggy. Well, uh, yeah, exactly in the shadows. Yeah, we do that for for the kids. Yes, we do that. But but you know what I mean. And in Egypt, for example, it's it could be depending on how you move it, a threatening sign. And in really? France, it means you are zero. Is that anything like holding an L up to your forehead for loser? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, you know what? Talk, talking about, believe it or not, another another gesture or body language that, for instance, in Netherlands they do when they put their index finger next to the temple. That means uh -huh. that that this project was done perfectly or in a very smart way, or that project manager is very smart. If they put it on the front of the forehead, that means they are stupid. Where I grew up, where I came from, you know, like in Egypt. When I put my finger next to the temple, that means that someone is crazy. See, see the uh, difference? At least, at, least they're using the, at least they're using the index finger and not the middle finger. I won't go through that. <laughs> You're not trapping me to do that one. <laughs> I was just going to say, what, is the, what does the middle finger mean? I know what it means over here. Well, it means the same thing, but it, it's done differently. But we're not going to go through that. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, real quick, and I know this is off topic a little bit. Sure. But, but you know, you just mentioned Egypt. And, yes. And obviously, they've been going through some strife. I'm so proud of them. I'm so proud of them. But, and, and, and while I... While Thank you. <laughs> and, and I know I'm going to step right in the middle of this, but... When you have 250,000 people, which represents like three-tenths of one percent of the population, I don't think we've heard the voice of the other 85 million people. You know what I mean? You know I mean? Yeah, but but uh, Dave, you know that I'm, I'm, I also do diversity consulting, and and right. uh, being Egyptian and being born there and and lived there for a few years and even worked there, I can tell you it's not it wasn't only the voice of two hundred fifty thousand people, maybe two hundred fifty thousand right. people. I, by the way, there were millions in the streets. They had the march right. of a million men on one of the Fridays, which was what they called the Friday of departure. And these people, basically, not to go out of, of the subject that we're talking today, but these people really uh, had no food anymore. They, they have no other option. They, and, and no one would listen to them. They communicated their message, but their message felt on deaf ears. There was a total, if you, if you notice, there was a total disconnect between the ex-president and the people, even the day before he went out. There was a total disconnect. There was no communication whatsoever between the people and the ex-president. I'll be damned. You know, and, and, and I know I've taken you off topic, and I apologize no, it's okay. for that. But, but you know, given, given your background and everything, I just had to ask the question. Um, I, have one more, I have one more question. Sure. What is your hope that Egypt does not turn into an Iran? I, 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 I absolutely hope not. And uh, honestly, from whatever, how I, I, I mean, I don't want, I don't want to predict what's going to happen. I'm very cautiously optimistic, and and I use the word cautiously optimistic because if we look at what's going on right now, the only organized uh, sector are the Muslim Brotherhood. Right. But the people, they, they. Let's say they are around 20% of the population. They do not represent the whole Egyptian population. I am Egyptian, I am Egyptian and I don't want the Brotherhood to, to, to get hold of the government. And I know my family doesn't want to. And I know people that I know that don't want to. The revolution was not an Islamic revolution. The revolution was not a religious revolution. And it wasn't even a revolution. It was a movement. You know, it was, yeah, it was a, a movement. Bread, right? yeah, yeah, but it was about bread. Exactly. It wasn't, it wasn't even a revolution because they did not 
uh, use violence. They were very peaceful. They marched, because, uh, putting the request together, you know. But I hope that they're going to have enough time to organize themselves. So there will be... What, what's really funny is that there are 24 political parties in Egypt. 24. Wow. wow. You know, but they... And you look at one leader and you don't find really one leader. But, you know, like I said, I'm optimistically, uh, I'm cautiously optimistic on what's going to happen. I well, know okay. they will get, they will come through. I know they will. Well, I certainly hope so. And, you know, I certainly hope, you know, that... I, is your, your family here, though, right now? No. Or, my or family is my husband. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, I didn't know if you still had family in Egypt. Yes, I do. I do. Uh, okay, well, I hope, I hope they... That, that, that there is some logic and reason that, that comes up out of all of this that, you know, obviously everybody needs to be represented, but to your point, I certainly hope that it's not overbalanced for where it doesn't need to be and that, and that this whole thing didn't happen and an ill result come out of it for everybody because I would certainly hate to see Egypt turn into an Iran and certainly don't want to see it turn into what's going on in Libya right now. Absolutely. And and like I said, I'm cautiously optimistic, but I know they will come through. Okay. Well, like I said, I, I thanks, thanks for humoring me on that. <laughs> sure. Uh, when we come back to the break, I'll get more back on topic. I'm Dave Campbell, CEO of Campbell Management Consulting. After the break, it'll be more with Ms. Sahar Andrade. You're tuned into Clarity from Chaos on KFNX. News Talk Radio 1100.